very plausible and reasonable idea. And then we start, once we, can, once we take that on board, then we can start opening our eyes to archaeological anomalies, like the Great Sphinx, like Baalbek, like submerged ruins, like Gobekli Tepe, and begin to consider what does all this mean? Are we in fact a species with amnesia? Are we here forgetful of the truth about ourselves? Maybe that's why we're so fucked up, you know, because mm. we just actually don't know. We've made up a story about where we came from and what we are. I certainly think it plays a part. Uh, and I also think that conservative skepticism is probably prudent when you're dealing with most scientific of issues. Course. Most things that come up that people are claiming. I mean, there's so many charlatans out there yes. and crazy people yeah. that are claiming new discoveries. Uh, in some cases, they examine these discoveries as long as they're far enough away from us or weird enough, mm. like this new planet that they believe they they have a ninety plus planet percent. Planet nine, yeah, yeah. yeah. They they're pretty sure there's something outside mm. past the Kuiper Belt, mm. and mm. they think it's massive. They think it's mm -hmm. at least four times, maybe larger. Uh, than uh, the United States, or got, then, excuse me, the world. Than the world, and got an orbit of about 10,000 years. Yeah. And that's interesting with comets, because mm -hmm. this huge, massive object circulating in the outer solar system through the Kuiper belt, which is a source of many of the comets that hit the Earth, mm. is destabilizing comets from safe orbits and putting them into really dangerous orbits that and come our way. The, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, what, what is the source of all these near-Earth objects? Do, does this have anything to do with Earth 1 and Earth 2? Does it have anything to do with the initial impact that created the moon? Is that because we were hit by another planet, right, mm -hmm. during the formation of the Earth? And this is all scientifically established, uh, astro scientists yeah. or yeah. astrophysicists, rather, and uh, astronomers all agree on that, right? There's that a there's... lot of debris that yeah. would, would go back to that, to that time. But, mm -hmm. but comets are another story because they're coming in from the far reaches of outer space. They're coming, they're coming in from the Oort cloud and the Kuiper mm -hmm. belt, just vast distances away. They're, they're voyagers. They're kind of messengers from the distant reaches of the cosmos who, who come in in an unpredictable way because their orbits are destabilized by something like Planet Nine. Isn't there something called Bode's Law where you, uh, you can measure the mass mass and the orbit of a certain planet and you can accurately depict where the next planet is going to be and doesn't that fall yeah. apart somewhere between Mars and Jupiter? That's With the asteroid belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which would indicate that something was probably there at That's one point been the in theory of the asteroid belt, that it was an exploded yeah. planet. Of course there's a lot of opposition to that theory mm -hmm. too. You know, you're right, skepticism really has an important role to play. It's it's very it's really it's really essential that we are skeptical. And Otherwise, we, we'd all be following Zachariah Sitchin well, and waiting for the Anunnaki to land. And e e exactly. We would have sold our houses December twenty first, two thousand and twelve, and we'd all be going, "What the fuck? Now I'm homeless." <laughs> exactly. Four years later. And I have to say, there's a skeptic called Michael Heiser who has done really an excellent job of of thoroughly, you know, debunking the bogus translations of uh, Zachariah Sitchin. Yeah, is he a Sitchin is wrong dot com? Is that Sitchin him? is wrong dot com. Yeah, it's a I, very I useful. It's a very useful site. So we I hated need, him and loved him at the same time. I, feel, I was so I, sad. I loved the idea of the aliens come down and manipulating the monkeys and making yeah. us to mine gold. It's a wonderful yeah. story. But unfortunately, it's a work of science fiction. It's yeah. not a work of fact. Damn uh, it, Zachariah. We, we, we need, I knew him. He was a fascinating man. I once drove him from Stonehenge to London. We had, we had many conversations. He was a deep and serious researcher, but I think he... I think he got he got carried away with his well, own fantasy. I also think that that fantasy became very lucrative, and it also became uh, a source of identity to him. Yeah, you know, I, I followed him pretty closely as well. I read the Twelfth Planet, and mm. uh, I got really into his research. And, and this is in my early pot smoking days when I first started smoking pot. So I was, I was all in. <laughs> I was all in. Yeah. And then as I got wiser, and then as I got well, I don't know, maybe not wiser, just I started recognizing objectively why these these things are so attractive. Mm. The fantastical is more attractive than the practical. Mm. And so something else uh, again I don't want I don't want to put Sitchin down and I'm I'm here also to say that Sitchin did, did a lot of really good work. He, he was a, he was did. a clever guy and he yes. did a lot of very 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 thorough research.